This is a middle loop quick, quick, quick class. Hi, I'm Jerry with Middle Loop, and this is a quick class by request. In today's quick class, we'll be showing you how to live stream your DJI drone to YouTube. We'll start out with some basic requirements and other information regarding YouTube. Then we'll show you how to set up the live stream on YouTube. Next, how to connect the remote controller to that live stream, and then we'll show how to go live. We tested on multiple controllers and drones, and we'll share some of the differences, including a microphone test on each for those wanting to narrate during their live stream. And finally, some tips and some troubleshooting if you run into some problems. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing. And if you find this video useful, tapping that like button tells that YouTube algorithm that others might find it useful too. Now, let's get started. YouTube provides a number of ways to live stream. There's mobile, webcam, and encoder. Mobile is meant to be used from a phone or tablet. It uses the device's camera and microphone, and it requires that your YouTube channel has at least 50 subscribers. Webcam is for live streaming from the desktop computer. It too is limited to the camera and microphone, but there's no restriction on the number of subscribers. And then there's encoder. An encoder is a hardware device or a computer running encoder software. This is by far the most flexible method and it can handle complex live streaming. This method has no subscriber minimum, which is great because this is the method we'll be using today to live stream from our drone. As you'll see, we'll first set up the live stream in YouTube on our computer, and then we'll use a feature of the DJI Fly app that essentially turns the remote controller into an encoder. We're going to assume that you already have a YouTube channel, but before you can live stream on your channel, you must activate live streaming. It's simple to do, you only have to do it once, but it can take up to 24 hours to become active. To activate it, from your computer's browser, open YouTube and make sure you're signed into your account. In the upper right, click the Create icon and select Go Live. Now, simply click the Request button. You may get this prompt to verify who you are. If you do, click Verify and follow the prompts to receive a one-time use code. Once you receive your code, enter it and click Submit. You'll receive this acknowledgement that you've successfully been verified. Now if you go back to the previous tab, you'll see that a countdown timer has started, estimating when live streaming will be available to you on your channel. Now that we're activated, let's set up our first YouTube live stream. Just like before, from your computer's browser, open YouTube and make sure you're signed into your account. In the upper right, click the Create icon and like before, select Go Live. Excellent. As you can see, we're no longer prompted to activate live streaming. The next several screens are kind of a wizard that'll walk you through the initial setup of your live stream. You'll only see the wizard the first time and from then on, it'll default to your previous settings. Of course, you can always change those settings each time you live stream. You can either select to go live now or schedule a future live stream. One advantage of pre-scheduling is it gives you a chance to promote it ahead of time and you'll have a link that you can share. But for this example, we're going to go live now. So under right now, we'll click start. The next question is very important. Here's where you'll select whether you'll be streaming from a webcam or an encoder. Since we're using an encoder, we want to select Go on the streaming software option. Okay, the final wizard question is one regarding whether it's made for kids. Our live stream is not specifically made for kids. Select Save. This is the control panel. At this point, YouTube is ready to receive the stream from your drone. It'll just sit here and wait. As soon as it receives that stream, you'll be live. We'll show you how to send the stream from the drone in a minute. Now, if you want to change any of the settings like the title or privacy, in fact, all the options that you would normally set when you're uploading a regular video to YouTube are here, like description and a thumbnail image. We're not going to get into the details of the settings here. There's plenty of videos out there, so we'll provide a link in the description to a good resource for that. Now, we mentioned earlier that the next time you go into set up a live stream, it'll skip that wizard we just ran through and you'll come directly to this control panel. From here, if you'd like to schedule the live stream, you can do so by clicking this Manage icon in the upper left. The control panel contains critical information that your drone's remote controller will need in order to be an encoder to use this live stream. We'll need both the stream URL and the stream key. This will make a little more sense in a minute. Just remember this is where you need to go to get that information. Now this key is a cryptic string of 20 characters and it must be typed in exactly. Getting it wrong is probably the number one reason for connection failures. 
At the end of this video, in the Tips and Troubleshooting section, I'll share a technique for copying it here and pasting it into your remote controller. The good news is, once entered, the remote controller will remember both the URL and the key for future flights, which is great. The URL will never change and the key will stay the same unless you reset it. We strongly recommend that you never share your key with anyone. Now you may need to experiment with the latency setting. It controls how much of your stream is cached, essentially the delay between live and when your audience sees the video. Normal will be better quality and less choppy for your audience, but the delay could be 30 seconds or more. Typically, your audience won't be aware of the delay unless you're interacting with them somehow, like via the chat feature. For now though, we'll leave it set to low latency. Okay, so now that your YouTube channel is set up and ready to receive the stream, let's get it started on a remote controller. We'll start by showing screens from the RC Pro flying the Mavic 3 Cine. The experience is almost identical on the standard RCN1 controller, and it's a little different on the original smart controller. We'll quickly run through the other two in a minute, but we'll be spending most of our time on the RC Pro. So here we go. It's a beautiful day to fly. We're assuming your remote controller is on, connected to the drone, and the internet. For the RC Pro and Smart Controller, that probably means that you've set up a hotspot. I guess that would also apply to the RCM1 controller if you're not using a phone as your display. To set up the remote controller as an encoder and start sending your stream to YouTube, in the upper right, tap the three dots. And then tap on the Transmission tab if it's not already selected. Next, at the top of the screen, you'll find Live Streaming Platforms. Tap on the right arrow. At this time, the only supported platform is RTMP, which is Real-Time Messaging Protocol. Tap on it. If you remember earlier in this tutorial when we were on the control panel on YouTube, we showed you where the stream URL and the stream key are located. They both go into this address field. Tap in the field and the virtual keyboard opens. First, type in the stream URL. Next, type a forward slash and then enter the stream key. Please note that you'll need to type in the hyphens and the letters are always lowercase. So if you see something that looks like a capital O, it's a zero. When you're done typing, push that back button on the remote controller to close the virtual keyboard. So that was a little painful, but as I said earlier, your remote controller will remember these settings and you won't have to type them in again unless you reset your key. As for resolution and bitrate, here too you might want to experiment depending on how good your internet connection is. We're going to start out with a set to 1080p and 5 megabits per second. Most phone data plans can handle that just fine, but if you have a weak signal, you may have to lower them. All right, are you ready? Tap that start button. You'll get a quick countdown and up pops this icon on the RC Pro. That's it, you're now live on YouTube. Now, if you were able to see your computer, you'd see a lot of useful information. This is where it'd be helpful to have an assistant who can watch the stream and change the settings on YouTube, or let you know that you need to change some of the settings on the controller. And if you have chat enabled, they can manage that as well. All right, now that we're live, what about stopping it? In a second, we'll go back to the RC Pro and show you how to stop sending the stream, but that won't immediately stop the live stream. The stream will still be running and your audience will get a black screen with that spinny thing. And for a period of time, you can start sending the stream again and you'll be back live again. Just be aware that when you're done, you should come back to here and click that end stream button. Okay, back on the RC Pro screen. Before we stop sending the stream, I wanted to show you that in this example, our drone's camera is set to take photographs, not video. For the stream, it really doesn't matter. It still sends video to the stream. However, you should note that the stream takes on all the characteristics of the camera's settings, which includes the exposure, white balance, ISO, and the aspect ratio, which in this case is currently set to 4x3, not 16x9. Now you can switch it on the fly, pun intended, and the stream will immediately get the new settings. It should be noted that even though we are now set to video, which is set to 4K, our audience is only receiving 1080p. If you remember when we were setting up our encoder stream, it was set to 1080p, which is the max allowed for the RC Pro. It's always a good idea to have your camera set up the way you want it before you get started. Okay, to stop sending the stream to YouTube, tap on the stream icon at the top. Notice that this is also where you can go to mute and unmute the microphone. We'll have more on microphones in a second. So, to stop sending the stream to YouTube, 
simply tap the exit icon and then when prompted tap end so now let's talk about other remote controllers in addition to the RC Pro, we have successfully tested live streaming on the Fly app of the RC M1 controller and the Go 4 app of the original Smart Controller. As we said earlier, the experience on the RC M1 controller is almost identical, so let's quickly show that first. In this example, we're showing the RC M1 controller connected to an iPhone as our display and the Mini 2 drone. Once again, we're using the Fly app. Just like before, tap the three dots in the upper right and then tap on the Transmission tab. At the top, you'll find Live Streaming Platforms. Tap on the right arrow. Now tap RTMP. So as you can see, it remembered the data from a previous live stream. But if you need to enter it, just tap in the RTMP address field to open the virtual keyboard. And like before, enter the URL, a forward slash, and the stream key. When you're ready, and this is a little different than the RC Pro, to close the virtual keyboard, tap Done. The other slight difference here is the RC Pro accommodates a faster bit rate. So we'll leave these alone for now and tap Start. That's it, we're live. And notice that even the stream icon looks the same as the RC Pro. So now we're on the smart controller connected to a Mavic 2 Pro running the DJI Go 4 app. To start the live stream, like before, tap the three dots in the upper right. If not already on the General Settings tab, Tap the three dots in the lower left. Then, midway down the screen, you'll find Choose Live Streaming Platforms and tap the right arrow. Now tap RTMP Custom. If you wait a second, the virtual keyboard will automatically open. Again, it remembers our data from a previous flight, but if you need to enter it, tap in the address field and enter the stream URL, a forward slash, and the stream key. When complete, to close the virtual keyboard, Hit the back button on the smart controller. Then tap next, and finally tap start, and that's it, you're live. The streaming icon on the smart controller looks a little different, but essentially it works the same. You can tap on it to kill the stream, as well as mute and unmute the microphone. All right, that's all the remote controllers that we've tested. Most likely, if you're using a different remote controller, it'll be similar. If you do, leave us a comment with your experience. I'm sure our viewers would appreciate it. Let's talk about microphones. I would imagine that most people live streaming would like to narrate their flights. So we tested mics in all three of the configurations we covered earlier in this video, and the results differed depending on the controller. First up is the RC Pro. As you probably know, the RC Pro doesn't have a built-in microphone. So we tested and had very good results with a DJI mic. This is a wireless mic. In fact, it comes with two wireless mics, which is great if you have a visual observer and you want to mic up both of you. The receiver attaches directly to the RC Pro's USB-C port and doesn't require any mounting hardware. We clip the mic to the lanyard and here's what it sounded like in the field. Using the DJI mic and the RC Pro. If you're interested in this DJI mic, we provided a link in the description. Now, we didn't test any other mics on the RC Pro for this video, but we have in the past for video we did on screen recordings. If interested, we'll put a link to that video at the end of this video. Next up, the original smart controller. The smart controller does have a built-in microphone. Here's a quick test of how it sounds. This is a test of the built-in microphone on the smart controller. All right, that's not bad. It does have a little off-mic sound to it. So we also tested the DJI mic on the smart controller and here's what it sounded like. So this is the DJI microphone on the smart controller. Yeah, I think it sounds a little better. And of course, you can better control where to place the mic. Plus another advantage that we didn't mention earlier, the DJI mic comes with a windscreen for the mics, which can come in handy. Finally, we also did a mic test on the standard RCN1 controller connected to the iPhone for the screen. And that just flat out didn't work. It uses the phone's microphone and you can hear it. It's just very distorted. It's almost as if the input is being overfed. Have a listen. This is a test of the iPhone microphone. Now I know the mic is good because on the screen recordings it sounds perfect. We also tried alternatives like connecting Apple AirPods to the phone. But it seems everything we did, the live stream continued to get its audio from the phone's mic, which, like before, was distorted. Anyway, we tried a number of methods, all unsuccessful. Hopefully, DJI will fix this in a future update. If they do, we'll note it in the description. If you're having trouble connecting the remote controller to the stream, 
The first thing to do is check the stream URL, the forward slash, and the stream key in the RTMP address field. We were having all kinds of trouble getting the smart controller to work. We double checked and re-entered this field over and over again. It looked right, but it just wouldn't connect. We finally got it working by copying and pasting these values. It's a little complicated because you're copying it to the clipboard on the computer and pasting it from the clipboard on the remote controller. Two different devices. So to get around that little obstacle, we created a text file on the computer. We first copied the URL and pasted it to the text file. We added the forward slash to the end of that, and then we copied and pasted the stream key to the end of it. Then we saved the file to a USB flash drive. But you can also save it to the cloud somewhere, like on Dropbox. Anyway, then you just need to open the file on the controller and copy and paste it from there. Yeah, it's a little inconvenient, but if you're having trouble, this is the first thing I'd try. Ideally, you'd have the computer with you in the field. Of course, it too would need to be on a hotspot, but if that's not practical, we found that we were able to set up the stream on YouTube in the office on a computer and let it sit there waiting for the stream to be sent. And then when we were in the field and we sent the stream from the drone, we were live. You might also want to play with the scheduling feature we mentioned earlier. Some drones have the ability to shoot in D-Log. If you shoot in this mode, your live stream will have this gray look to it. Now you can turn on Color Display Assist, which will help, but we recommend normal mode for live streaming. So that's it for this quick class. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button. And if you're interested in other videos on DJI products, we have a lot more. Be sure to check out our channel. Thank you, have a great day, and happy flying.